Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Last Talk Radio. visual information. So that's why we're simultaneously broadcasting. So any of those of you who want to watch, go to the chat in Blog Talk Radio and there's a link, even a link there for those of you who are in foreign countries. So we certainly appreciate you being here and taking the time out for your son of your Sunday. Also, for any of you who need technical support on WebEx, 866-229-3239. I've also put that in the chat. Just use the little slide bar and go up to the top of the chat. Remember that if you want to comment, you can raise your hand on blog talk. I think it's just hitting the number one, you know, raise your hand if you have a question or a comment. And we'll try to get right back to you. And on WebEx, it's go down to the bottom of the participants list, and it's got a little sign that says raise hands. So we'll try to keep track of everything at once. It is not easy running all of these boards. I wanted to bring your attention to something that we have just added to our Sound Health Options website, and it's a little section along the side uh, has a little red present box with a green bow and it says freebies. So you click that and it gives you a lot of information about free classes that we have put up. There's a free two-hour nano class We're sponsored by the nano um, software program today, a radiation rescue class along with software and registration right there online. There is a muscle management class that happened on July 28th, a nutrition class that happened on July 7th, and we just did a class yesterday that will be up here shortly. Um, you know, it just totally escaped me what that class was about. That's crazy. I just did it yesterday. Bio diet. People reported that it was one of the greatest classes they've ever had with us and certainly one of the greatest classes they've ever had for free online because we gave people a way to tell if there was a problem with weight management and gave them a way to set up a bioacoustic weight management um, program in their community, a center. So any of you who want to go back and get that up, just happened yesterday, and so Monday the web person should be posting that. So that's great and wonderful. We're sponsored today by the Sound Health Research Center that also sponsored that class yesterday, and we did that because we think we're being taken advantage of. We think we have a right to know what's going on, and also sponsored by the Citizens for a Better America. Now, I just, I just made that part up. I think this absolutely is about citizens for a better America. Just like today, we're going to be talking about the candidates 
on things that can help you decide who to vote for because people are having a lot of trouble with that. You have a right to know what people are talking about, what their motives are, especially they claim to represent you. So that little nano voice program, nanovoice.org, will give you sort of warm up and I'll show you how to do that on a lot of our different uh, free programs. You can go to our website and see a lot of different things that are going on all the time. Happy hour on Tuesday. And we have events at Soundhouse. So you can actually go look at the calendar and get your invitation right here on the calendar. It's the very first link. A lot of people ask for it. So a lot of good information there. We want to emulate Star Trek. You remember Star Trek when you could ask the computer anything, any kind of lesson. You could even say, Oh, Gray T. Hot. Now we're hoping to get there to be able to provide you the actual stuff, but right now we're providing you information. We are self-supporting, we're non-profit self-supporting, but there's been no grant, so we haven't had any money coming in from grants, except for those of you who have provided money for other people to take our professional weeks on class. I certainly appreciate those that have donated. I think there's a little donate button right here. Or there was. I don't see it now. Mm hmm. Well, that's okay because I feel embarrassed about asking people to donate anyway. But we have helped several people with Parkinson's and they want to help start Parkinson's Center. So we had one donation of, um, that we were able to help three people take their upcoming class next week. And we've gotten some more money in, so if people are interested, they're matching funds, they'll look up. You put in a dollar, we put in a dollar, so you can see what's really going on. So if you've ever wanted to take this class and wanted to do it at an extreme bargain, please get in touch with us, and I guess that's the end of commercials, I think. We're going to be using nano voice today, vocal profiling, to sort of maybe level the playing field about how each person is unique or the same. We stick a microphone in somebody's face and take a sample of their voice. Um, sometimes we do this from uh, recording. Um, most of the time. But there's been times when um, government people and people from the media would deliver us a video, a very good quality video because they wanted to know something about people. So we do that um, as a service to the community, and we also bring you additional information. As today, we are going to talk about the candidates who you're voting for, accusations are flying all over, candidates are lying or at least being accused of it. So we thought we would bring you the motivations or intentions of the two proclaimed candidates, Obama and Romney, and I'm also going to bring in Ron Paul, because I think in answering the question, is there hope, that's where it is, and when we listen to some of the things going on, we may be able to see where that hope comes in. So we're going to start with the secret how U.S. President are neutralized. And then I have a surprise for you as soon as this is finished. Now, this guy, I, I have to admit that I'm prejudiced. Um, this is a link I'm going to put in this chat so you guys can go look this up anytime that you want. And I probably should have them put in a list of links so you guys can go look at any of it. Glass Check TV uh, tells the truth about what's going on, and I get a lot of information from there. Uh, there are people that have been on our shows also. So this is a little bit about history and what happened, and I hope I've got the commercial technology. U.S. Presidents are neutralized. 
conflict of interest has a very big role. In this case, as God described, is the way the government compromised having the defense and neutralized them and turned it to people who do want to be better encouraged. You also see this in in assassination at the time. You see it in everyday life. You see it in presidential politics. How does it mean it is Bill Clinton was compromised on the Monica Lewinsky scheme. The FBI was heavily involved in that process. They gave questions to the Polish Rhine's attorneys and told them what questions to ask. Once the information was settled back to them, they even went so far as to get it to the start team to ask Monica Lewinsky to wear a wire it was a personal, it was a test to the President of the United States, but a test to accept justice for the investigation of these criminals. But we talk about a covert operation. That was a, that was a splendid example of a covert operation. And here's Ken Strong looking for it. He's the closest associate of Jesse Tess. This was linked to the tobacco lobby of the military national complex. What happened when, when the decision that was about to take place? The only place to go back in and look at the newspapers and see the very secrets. Right before the vote was taking place, Bill Clinton was on the verge, what was, was, was heavily exposed to the media, saying, we've got to think about really sending troops into Yugoslavia to stop this carnage. But right after the vote was taken and he survived, he paid off. He bombed Yugoslavia. What happened on the first day of the bombing? The Russian Duma rejected the START II treaty, which would have cut in half nuclear forces on both sides. And Jesse Helms's appetite for profits from Star Wars was alive and well. Because no START II, that equals, that equals um, um, Star Wars investments that we made. So you see the connection there? They leveraged the guy. He pays off by giving them a war that allows later to expand in Europe. And the sabotages start to open the open the door for Star Wars. So in the process of compromising people and using the compromised status of the, of the target to leverage to get them to do their bidding is something that takes place at the presidential level as well. J. Edgar Hoover tried to leverage Jack Kennedy. He met with him and he said, We know all about your affair with Judith Exner. Well, Judith Exner was being used by John Kennedy to funnel CIA documents to mobster Johnny Rosselli and Sam Giancana as part of the CIA's plot against the life of Fidel Castro. So of course they knew about it. It was a government operation. They were trying to say, well, you know, it's sex, ha ha, ha ha, but they knew all about it. And so Kennedy was just enraged at this attempt to compromise and leverage him. He blew up at them. He would have fired them, but he couldn't. He wouldn't back down, so they'd sell it. But how did that take place? What happened? Kennedy originally was involved in the, in the effort with, with the CIA's anti-Castro plot. Then the Cuban Missile Crisis came along, and in order to negotiate the withdrawal of uh, Soviet missiles from the Earth, he had to promise the Soviet Union, we will not allow an invasion of Cuba to take place again, and the CIA will be muzzled. The CIA people were enraged at this because their whole agenda was to get rid of Castro. That's from the plot against uh, Kennedy, which is boiling point. They then began to attempt to conduct uh, a continuation of these covert CIA operations against Cuba. They had expeditionary forces that were taking off from the beaches of Florida and, um, and uh, Louisiana. Kennedy tried to stop this. Ultimately, he instructed his brother, Robert, to instruct Hoover to arrest these rogue CIA operatives for violation of the Neutrality Act, and that is for conducting the long term intelligence. Six weeks later, Jack Kennedy was still in Dallas. So that's the dynamic that led to that assassination. It was all related to Cuba and Vietnam and the Cold War and the military industrial complex and the money that comes from foreign investments, private capital, and, and who worked out the church. They wanted their money. Okay. See that this has happened to other presidents. It's happening right now in the media, but it's not happening to Rand Paul. 
except they're trying to attack him for being too old. Ron Paul doesn't have a skeleton in his closet. Uh, that's my opinion. He didn't have anything to hide. Now, there was something a few months ago that they tried to go after his son, and I was pulled into that and was able to say where that was really coming from and what was the motivation. But this is being done by way of lobbying, by money, my money, money, and CIA, power, power, power. So as we look at these candidates, we need to keep that in mind. Remember that we did this Jack Abernoff um, thing a few months ago about how people in Congress could be easily manipulated, bought off with season tickets, and how they went, in, went after the staff of these people who were giving uh, information and advice to the congressmen, and that's how they were getting to them. I don't want to play that again. We've used it a couple of times, but I did post the link for you just to go look at that. It was on national TV, Diane Sawyer, um, about Congress and bribes and whatever is going on. So am I prejudiced? Uh, yes, I am prejudiced about who should be president, and that's why I've added Paul on call to the mix. There are other things that go on in wanting to look at the media. And this is another piece about how Obama ha is um, manipulating even Saturday Night Live. This isn't very long. And I don't know why it won't play. They don't want us to know about humor in the presidential campaign. It's just kind of something they're doing nothing. Hmm. Well, it won't play, and I'll just get rid of it and tell you what's going on. Obama campaign uh, really came down on Saturday Night Live and other comedians who were using some of Obama's problem statements to turn it around and make a joke out of it. And they weren't uh, allowed to do that, and they were told that they weren't allowed to do it. So that's not going to come up. Um, it was just a picture of people standing. I will go ahead and put this up. It's, again, from Grass Check. TV, and it's about what happened to us on the way to the White House. But it's getting pretty bad when comedians aren't allowed to use the president or the president's um, misstatements as a form of entertainment. And we don't need that. Okay. So as we begin to look at that and you realize that the campaigns are being manipulated and are manipulating at the same time. What can people say? What can't people say? There was another show, and I don't know if it was Diane Sawyer, but it was about bigots and about how oh, some of these things that TV has been censored. So maybe that's why we can't get into it. There has just been so much uh, censorship and, and killing uh, sites that are going against Obama or I don't know if Romney has that ability. But this campaign is definitely being controlled by the media. This is one that I just thought was incredibly horrible. Note that how they're picking on Ann Romney but praising Michelle Obama. So again, this is the media. The board can with your Fox 411.com entertainment news sounds up. Over on our pop truck phone, focus today is on the women of the campaign trail, specifically what they're wearing and how the media handles pointing out the price tag. Back in May, Ann Romney was slammed for wearing a $900 shirt. The Washington Post wrote a quote, will not help her husband change those perceptions. Though last Friday when First Lady Michelle Obama attended an Olympic perception in a $6,800 outfit, 
It was noted in the same publication that, quote, he stepped up her game. Today, several experts weigh in. One former political publicist calls it, quote, pure hypocrisy at its finest. However, one media commentator says overall, quote, Americans need to face the fact that with our current system, politicians need to have money. The Twitterverse has also joined in the conversation. He would all have to say today online. Also on Fox411.com, has the sexy woman taken over the modeling industry? We don't need the rest of that. Just how uh, one candidate or wife, wife is ripped for an $800 shirt while Michelle Obama was praised for a $6,500 um, outfit. That was really is a problem for me. And how they are manipulating the ads and what's going on. So there is one here from Fox News, too. But I think it's absolutely incredible. Now, they show the same thing three or four times and how the news media uh, manipulated. And I don't think it's too early at all to say follow the money. That's where it is. But at the end of this, they show you the real film. And you can see how they have manipulated the soundtrack to make Ron Paul look at and what really happened. And I think we get to the end of this, and it's a little long, but it's well worth seeing how the media is manipulating. Video deception, it says. And this is from Fox News, by the way. It did this. And he came out of nowhere, and he won the Republican poll. Ron Paul, named that conservative, their favorite. To run for president at the attack, but reaction not exactly warm and fuzzy. Now for the reception. The winner of this year's CPAC softball is now. Okay. Well, the winner of this year's is Texas Congressman Ron Paul. In the eddies, the winner, probably not the reaction he was hoping for when he named the favorite to run for the White House, mixed applause and booze and how Ron Paul was an answer for me from a fire Texas Republican. Uh, no doubt unfazed by the reaction. He's live with me now out in Capitol Hill, winner that swap for the second year in a row. How are you doing, sir? How are you doing, sir? Followed by 
Astro Fox took the reaction of the Seat Pack in 2010. That was filled with Mitt Romney supporters who moved the announcement of Ron Paul's victory and represented it as a reaction to Paul's CPAC 2011 win. The winner of this year's CPAC is now... The winner of this year's CPAC Pro Bowl is Texas Congressman Ron Moore. It is the winner of the reaction to the Pro Bowl. We made the favorite of the White House, Mr. Charles, and we the winner of the season. Now, here is a little bit of 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 a little and this year probably was one of the longer lists we've had. Um, and we had a number of writing candidates, which I'll touch on when I show the results. And we asked this year, we asked it two ways. We asked it as a first choice, and we asked it as a second choice. And I'll show the combination of both. Um, and the next slide, the winner of the straw poll this year. professional job because in the beginning when it was on Fox News it looked and sounded very um, one string of information but they took the booze uh, from the audience and took out that soundtrack and put it with the announcement of Ron Paul and um, deliberately there is a video here um, about Ron Paul that I want to play, and it will show you how Ron Paul really has the public support. And I just need to find that. I hate it when I do these things. Um, Vigilant citizens, is that it? 
I have a lot of things here open. Oh, I hate dead air on the... From Luna Mel Moon. But I have two from Luna Mel Moon. I will just go try to get this again. One from Luna Mel Moon was about... Um, Biden saying that he would impeach Obama if Obama did a war thing. But it's manipulated too because pieces of that was about another candidate. This is about Ron Paul after they caught him after, well, this says the same thing, not yet. Now I feel like an absolute fool because I can't find the seat. But it was a reporter coming up to Ron Paul saying that, well, how do you feel about this and how do you feel about that? And it was lies. They were trying to make Ron Paul even say that, um, he was agreeing with these people who said that they really didn't have uh, the vote. And Ron Paul stood strong and said, we absolutely do have these votes. I'm going to open up my link for the show so we can see where our this is. But this reporter, and I don't remember where the reporter was from, so look back and the media is the one that is trying to control what is going on. No, that's about impeach Obama. I wish I could find this because Ron Paul, uh, people looking at other things to play, because Ron Paul was so wonderful in this thread and saying, well, I really haven't heard that, and we've got the vote. And we have the most delicate in Alaska, and the, the news reported we came in third, we actually came in first. So, is there hope for what's going on? Am I prejudiced toward Ron Paul? Absolutely, I am. And I am prejudiced because his vocal print shows that he's the right person for the job. I'm going to go... Um, down through some of these to see if I can find these links. I think you're all going to be surprised when you begin to look at what really has happened when you look at the vocal print of these people. Now, this is the ad or the news about Obama that I used to make this vocal print. So I'm going to show you three vocal prints. Obama, Mitt Romney, and try to find this one from Ron Paul. And then to show you what the vocal print really says. So let's go ahead and play Obama when he's talking about war. Now, in this particular piece, I was he was very convincing. He said all the right things. But remember, he said he would close Guantanamo, and he hasn't. And he said he would keep the space program, and he hasn't. So his words are kind of hollow. That he's in the middle of the office of the election campaign and kicked off uh, his annual State of the Union address a short time earlier. He listed out the uh, the achievements of his first term, something that links uh, with the two states of the economy and uh, the end of America's most wanted terrorist Osama bin Laden. Why my message to business leaders is simple. Ask yourself what you can do to bring jobs back to your country. And your country will do everything we can to help you succeed. In the last 22 months, businesses have created more than 3 million jobs. We will not go back. For a economy weakened by outsourcing, bad debt, and phony financial problems. Who 
first time in my year, there are no Americans fighting in Iraq. For the first time in two decades, Osama bin Laden is not a threat to this country. First of all, kind of stop the Senate and then the Chiefs. The Taliban's momentum has been broken, and some troops in Afghanistan have begun to come home. These achievements are a testament to the courage, selflessness, and the teamwork of America's armed forces. To the power of our diplomacy, a world that was once divided about how to deal with the okay, last year program, now stands as one. The regime is more isolated than ever before. And as long as they shirk their responsibilities, this pressure will not relent. America is determined to prevent Iran from getting a nuclear weapon, and I will take no options off the table, but a peaceful resolution of this issue is still possible. We need to end the notion that the two parties must be locked in a perpetual campaign of mutual destruction. The politics is about clinging to rigid ideologies instead of building consensus around common sense ideas. I'm a Democrat, but I believe what Republican Abraham Lincoln believes. The government should do for people only what they cannot do better by themselves and no more. And I think this is where the one Paul one slipped up and it's not going to do it at this point. Okay, now let's play Romney. I tried to find war things, current things, and when I look at their focal terms or their overview. Just to find somebody who will make sure that that scenario doesn't ever happen. And the key to that is prevention. We all spend a lot of time talking about what happens after the bomb goes off. The real question is, how do you prevent the bomb from going off? And that's why I spent my time doing this together over the last four years and kind of serving on the Homeland Security Advisory Council. And that means intelligence and counterterrorism. I look at the idea that the person is going to be in Guantanamo. I'm glad they're from Guantanamo. I don't want them on our soil. I want them in Guantanamo where they don't get the access to lawyers they get in our soil. I don't want them in, in our prison. I want them there. Some people have said we are close to Guantanamo. My view is we are double Guantanamo. We are to make sure that the terrorists. And there's no, there's no question that in the setting like that, where you have the ticking bomb, that the President of the United States, not the CIA interrogator, the President of the United States has to make the call, and enhanced interrogation techniques have to be used, not torture, but enhanced interrogation techniques. Ooh, here's one Ron Paul called Mitt Romney stupid. That's not the one I wanted, but at least let me just hear Ron Paul's voice. Thank you, General Romney. I'll make you the question if you were President of the United States, would you need to go to Congress to get authorization? to take military action against Iran's nuclear facilities. Uh, you sit down with your attorneys and tell you what you have to do, but obviously the president of the United States has to do within the best interest of the United States to protect us against a, a, a potential threat. The president did that as he was planning on moving into Iraq and received the authorization of Congress. Uh, you know, we're going to let the lawyers talk about what he needed to do and what he didn't need to do, but certainly what you want to do is to have the agreement of all the people uh, in leadership of our, of our government as well as our friends around the world.
for Obama is more of the same. I like it just the way it is. If you vote for Obama, there's going to be some change, most of in an economic setting, and I'll show you this. In a minute, but before I do, I want to show you Ron Paul on top. Well, I don't see Ron Paul. I'll have to go back and grab it. Um, I thought I had it open. Maybe I've got too much open. This is Ron Paul about dignity. When you compare Ron Paul and the people I'm going to admit that I am so regretful of here, comparing Ron Paul to the two of them, his emotions come out first. The emotions of a note of being, helping other people. He has a score of 39, and it is a score of 35. But blue is the predominant issue in Ron Paul's chart. Then comes do it and usefulness. When both when our Obama people, there is do it and emotions are totally secondary. When it comes to a love of humanity, neither Ron Paul neither Mitt Romney or Barack Obama have any blue in their note of speech. That's a love of humanity. Ron Paul has a high score there. When you look at spirituality, Ron Paul is do it first and then let your emotions come. But the idea that he is going to use this uh, opportunity to be president, and I'm hoping that I can find this other presentation before we leave the air that says of Ron Paul, we have the delicate. Let's see what's going to happen on the floor because the media has announced we don't have the delicate. They've announced we're coming third and fourth when really we have the most number of delicates. So we'll see what happens at the convention. In looking at this, I think this is our only hope. I think that Ron Paul will return heart, and maybe that will kill him off. I think um, other presidents who brought, brought heart to the and soul to the presidency got really jeered and laughed out of the place. But as you can see by the manipulation of what happened, they're saying that these other people are being bought off. They're being manipulated. We don't see that in Ron Paul's past, that he has anything that he can be manipulated for. Now, let's take a step deeper and one of overall intention, Ron Paul comes through the spirituality and heart of the humanity and the need to help others, which I think is critical and important right now. Now, if we were in the middle of war, uh, at which we are, I guess, um, you're going to want a tough, tough do it president. But it's got to be a logical perspective and perspective of both Romney and Obama is just do it. Until you separate them and begin to look at how all of this fits together. Now, how is this different? One of them, we took the wave file to look at their overall intention. And the other, we took a word-for-word -word evaluation. Now, when you look at the word-for-word -word evaluation, you see that Obama then begins to have some emotion about all of this. Um, but this is uh, a little piece, too, of, with Osama bin Laden from him. So that's an emotional issue for him, maybe because he thinks he's going to get caught in a, a lie. I don't believe that Obama, uh, Osama bin Laden happened when they said it did. In looking at the vocal plans, it's a fib. But if you look at Obama's print, it's a combination of blue and yellow. 
I want to think about it. I want to feel about it. I think about it. I want to feel about it. And here's this, I want to feel about it first. I'm surprised, we were surprised that there wasn't a lot of ego showing until we look in levels of fantasy. And his justice is in levels of fantasy. But one of the things you look at Obama, he has two rows of foundation, and they do not touch. So there's a dual or split personality when you're talking about Obama. He can talk about one thing and totally not relate it to something right inside it. When you look at Romney's strength, his strength is reactionary. It is red, red and yellow. So his is reaction and yellow, which takes him all in a head perspective. The red says let's deal with the future. The yellow says let's deal with um, thought and logic. And look at. Well, I have a comment about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Oh, the comic one just came up. Let's look at that in a minute. Um, so when you begin to look at Obama is fighting between his emotions and his intellect, at least in a left brain perspective. No, I said that backwards. So Romney is red and yellow, and that's a left brain perspective. And with Obama, it's intellect and emotion, which he's fighting with his left and right side. And right now, his right side emotions are winning. He was talking about before. He may, he may be um, concerned about winning this election. There's this one little thing that shows me manipulation. Obama attacking Romney about outsourcing. And then at the same time, This is only a very short outsourcing. Now, listen to this carefully. It's only a couple minutes long. So, Obama is accusing Romney of outsourcing. This is there's always looking for ways to bring American jobs back to America. So, this week, it was shocking to learn. So, maybe such a project for underway in America, rebuilding bridges, those American cities, but they've hired Chinese firms and Chinese workers. Why? 2020 Anchor Cuomo is the captain of our Bringing America Back team, and he decided to take those two Rebuilding the most humbling infrastructure is now a priority. Help us rebuild the workers. Help us get them to America. Help us put construction workers back to work. In New York, a $400 million renovation of the Alexander Hamilton Bridge. In California, a whopper, a $7.2 billion new bridge to connect San Francisco and Oakland. And in Alaska, a proposed $190 million bridge project. Sounds like a great opportunity for government spending to actually lead to real jobs. The problem? Much of the work is going to Chinese government-owned contracting firms. When we're subsidizing jobs in China, uh, we're not creating any wealth in the United States. In Alaska, outraged union workers took to the airwaves with an obvious point. This is not the time to send more jobs to China. Our tax dollars will provide hundreds of jobs there, not at home. U.S. law actually requires major infrastructure projects to buy America, and the cost difference is reasonable. In California, U.S. firms say they would have met those guidelines. State officials decided to turn down federal money for a major part of the bridge, allowing a Chinese company to get the job at a cost of almost 3,000 American jobs and a potential $1 billion boost to the struggling California economy. It would have had a multiplier effect because it would have not only given uh, thousands of Californians jobs, but also the subsequent spending would have been reinvested back in our economy. Is this the best way to bring America back? We went to California officials who claimed the Chinese could do the work faster and cheaper. Why can't the Americans do it as quickly as the Chinese? What makes them so special? One issue that you will consistently hear every time you go to a conversation site in this country is that they struggle with this point in time to obtain relevance. That is an issue in this country. So can you say that you guys have done everything you can to keep jobs here in building this bridge? Absolutely. But would American companies have done it, Chris? 
for a little less money and tried to race it along? The U.S. firms say, absolutely. They say they could have done this job. And there's a bigger point here. It's not a level playing field. The Chinese firms are state-owned. They don't pay their workers as much. That's why the Buy America laws were passed. The states can get around them by that. We'll never bring America back. You have to enforce the rules of what American companies play. You begin to look at this and you see that they are the same person, except they're coming from a little different framework. Now, you tell me why Romney didn't challenge Obama. Now, this was on national news because they're covering for each other. According to Grigio, the perfect pairing is Emma Sadeen, Troy Maso Canali, Da Vinci, and Edward Germani. Learn about perfect pairing, where the wine is from, and more. When you're looking at something Obama said, um, he agreed with President Lincoln that we should only do, we very much want to do things that people can't do for themselves, and we certainly can't build bridges. Well, what about buying America? We're supposed to buy in America, and he gives a job, million, billions of dollars to the Chinese to build our own bridges? It doesn't make sense. It's totally illogical as to what's going on. This is going to all talking about dignity, and we have several of his vocal points in our wall, in our cultural wall. So the difference here is there is no difference. Who's the best person to vote for? I don't think it makes any difference except. If you're voting for Obama, you're voting for more of the same. And we have some articles here that we don't have time to look at, but it's about um, the government saying all rainwater belongs to the government, so they went in and drained these people's ponds, the ponds that have been there 30, 40 years. Rainwater belongs to the government, but they're really trying to cover up how much radiation is in the rainwater. How ludicrous, how stupid. Rainwater belongs to the government in the sky's pond, and so they drain the pond and drain the water out on the ground or wherever they took it. Are they going to do that every time it rains? Well, we have gotten so screwed up in what's important. Just like this video we showed of, they took tanks, not, not this one, several tanks, and a SWAT team to go get a 13-year-old girl because she wouldn't take the medication that the government demanded that she take. This is crazy. I could give you more and more ideas about what's going on. But it just shows how upsetting this is that we can't even laugh about it because this last thing came up, and I'm going to end this with this. Um, uh, Beth, I'm going to read 90 seconds. Beth, I'm going to read that out loud. Beth says, not surprising. They're both reading from the same progressive script as I always thought they were both driving us to the same dam, but taking a different route to get there, a rough ride with either one. Absolutely. What can we do? Well, go to the Ron Paul site, see if you can help them out, because their donations are really dwindling. Help them get their people to the convention. 50 seconds. Help give him at least from a ticket somehow, or putting his foot in Romney's door, which is what his son at Mantle tried to do with endorsing um, Romney. This is this comedian one that just decided to come up, so I'm going to go ahead and play it. And this is about the Obama people disallowing comedians to talk about Obama's mistakes. And I, I did a, a, what I thought was a, a, a sarcastic joke with the president of the Nobel Peace Prize saying, you know, you didn't earn that Nobel Peace Prize, and I didn't build my business. I think sarcastic. I think, ah, yes, you did earn it, and yes, I built my business. But how do you feel, you know, they went after comedians that went after uh, in, in plus? Uh, you know, they look like the... Ten seconds. ...the just a real comment, 
doing your stand-up act in a comedy club, that doesn't mean it's a joke. And I say, well, of course it means it's a joke. You're, you're a comic. You know, you're going to lift the stuff and you're going to laugh. But they're going after uh, a game from Daniel Tosh, Tracy Morgan. Uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, well, I think it's scary and dangerous. Uh, I think uh, free speech is probably the coolest thing we have in this country. And but then you can label it hate speech and dismiss it, and then you're allowed to censor it. But I think it's really dangerous and scary. And you do feel psychologically, wherever you are, and it's just a lot of air, the public recording what you're saying. And as comedians, we always want to push the envelope, and it's our nature to only say inappropriate things. And almost everyone has heard inappropriate jokes, either about babies, or, you know, or whatever, things that are too dark, but dark power humor, dark humor. Right. So to shut it down, and, 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 and you know, it's not healthy for the society. It's one of the greatest things we have going for us to do. I think you have to kind of slap and say, I don't like that joke. I don't find it funny. That's your choice. Not everything is funny to everybody. And some jokes, I mean, my act, in fact, what I said about the president was that it's a rape. I thought, well, it's just not my act. But if you take it out of context, my act, it's you, you, well, I mean, you know, you could say, well, it's, it's, it's against everybody, and it's making fun of everybody. I mean, it is, but it's, the point of it is that it's wrong. That's why you're laughing. It's, it's, it's teasing people as opposed to being Well, I, yeah, I, I think it would be the way. I mean, I know there was a sensitivity to it, having a forecast of the rest of the president, and the way President Obama was elected, so there was a sensitivity in the beginning, and then over time, it sort of means there's a victimizing, not to satirize the president. Because... We, how do you feel about when people say Senator and lies, they won't make fun of President Obama, the only son of Republicans, not Democrats? What's your answer to that? Well, I, I, I would say the area that I was raised in uh, was just the edgiest place I've been with all of um, I did an Obama bit, nothing really mean or anything. I just got here, I did some first seniors. And of course, if I was at a house, it's so good. And I'm saying this is a chili. My impression is Obama, but I was looking to the angle, and once he gave the speech in Kansas City about fair share, he was very good at, at the debate, because he created a small man to their closing argument. Uh, you know, they don't have your buddy, the friends, and they don't have your buddy, and I was like, oh, and then I read that, and I was like, wow, that's funny. I had an angle, so I was not going to do it. So, but I think that in New York City, um, you know, the New York Thing. I mean, I know they attempted to do one way, but they said they have a little bit too much character or kind of advice. And as far as I know, it's just it's just off. It's right there. So in, in my lifetime, this is the obvious area to it, of course, the comedy. But there are a lot of reasons, but it's definitely very sensitive. And when I try to do it with all that, I'm kind of hooked for it. I just think it's in the audience, you know? Right. Well, here's the thing, too. You know, do you think... It's not that you're making, going into order making fun of President Obama, but it, you, it doesn't matter who the president is, you're looking for a funny angle because you're going to end up trying to do an impression of whoever is president and, you know, and te really tease them and make fun of them, right? It's not, well, because he's president, whoever is president. Well, yeah, let's put it this way, John. I mean, if you think about going up in Vietnam and Watergate Nixon, one of the big answers of our generation is question authority. Now, right now, the authority happens to be President Obama. So it's a natural thing for a comedian. We're supposed to tear down the people in power, just no matter who they are. You know, and that's that's the reason they call it. We take hot shots at the king or the president. You know, this is this is in our DNA. It's what we're supposed to do. So to not do it, that seems kind of it's not healthy for America. You know. Yeah, I remember learning about the comedian, uh, a great comic, Mark Paul, who really changed comedy. Comic, stand up comedy just to be in a, in a tuxedo and a bow tie. And Mark Paul came out on stage in jeans and a sweater, just reading from the newspaper, no one had done that. He influenced Woody Allen, he influenced Lang, he influenced anybody. And Mark Paul was, uh, <clears throat> was making, I believe, making fun of uh, Nixon when uh, Kennedy was running for president against Nixon. And then, uh, and Eisenhower was the administration. And, and then, when Kennedy became president, he started making fun of the Kennedy administration, and they didn't like that. And that really, uh, sold his career. Well, more so lived up here in Northern California, where I live, and I lived up to the 12 year old hour, and went to the two plus one in a while, Robin Williams, Stephen Wilson, there. And he promoted the fact that he'll be dozens and dozens and dozens of comedians still going to the family go. Or this ten foreign jokes, and now the old Obama jokes. So this is more dull than the fifties. So it's all what happened? Well, the guy, I think it was a Democratic liberal. So yeah, you know, I, I never made fun of Obama because I couldn't. Like he said, find an angle. I was waiting for 
him to say something that struck me as as uh, as ridiculous. And then I wasn't waiting for it. When he said it, I, that's when I went, what? You know, on that. Well, there you have it. Even control of our comedy clubs and what is going on. So I don't really know what to do except now you have a visual proof of the truth of what's happening with a vote for either Obama or Romney is a vote for the same agenda. I just go about it in a slightly different way. I like to say Obama that's what it is. In my mind, if I'm going to be forced to vote for either of them, I think I will write in Ron Paul. Ron Paul, but neither one of them will get my vote. I don't like Obama because it will say, I like the way things are. I want things to continue this way. I want unemployment to continue. I want these outrageous taxes on employers to continue. I want Obamacare to continue. I think there's a better way. I don't know that Romney is that better way. I think it'll be the status quo, but Romney did promise to get rid of Obamacare. And that's a big one. I should just let Obamacare go through, because it means we have a bigger audience. But I don't think Obamacare is good for the nation in any way. I don't think it's good for any of us to have politicians who get to um, have their kids learn this myth when the rest of us are paying. It's, it's not a fair law. I wouldn't mind it to the law if it, if it was fair. But what's going on in our country right now is not fair. There's a couple of things in the chat that people should know. Follow the money, follow the money. Uh, speaking of water, Cheney made it so that fracking companies do not have to comply with the Clean Air and Water Act. Absolutely. Go back and listen to last week's show when we talked about it. Mark Paul is brilliant still, and I don't know what we mean by that, but I'm going to read it anyway. I think we're all being taken for a ride. And we had to get on the bandwagon in order to be taken for the ride. I don't think we should listen to news. We should find out for ourselves. And I think if we want to know the truth, we'll go to Ron Paul's site. The rest of them is just spin. Like Michelle Obama's $6,500 dress is okay. That Ann Romney's $800 shirt is not. I can't let the media decide this one, people. I don't know how to find an answer here, but at least you have more of the truth. Thanks for joining us. Please join us for a happy hour next Tuesday. And we'll talk later.